a user has an application that relies on NiFi to communicate with its backend. At any point in time, one of the database goes offline and we want to have the ability to switch to the other available databases. So how do we do this? Let's build a flow for this scenario. Let's start looking over the shell script we're going to use for the execute stream command. This script will be used to interact with NiFi Toolkit. First, we explore some variables, like where the NiFi Toolkit is installed. We, we're going to use NiFi Toolkit for this. Uh, second, we nominate the process group ID that we're trying to execute the action on. This is going to be different in your case, so make sure you populate it with the ID or you spend some time to programmatically capture that variable name that we are going to update DB name. My available database names or the set of uh, databases, we have DB01 and DB02, remember, as we had it in the connections. Next, what we do, we create an array and then we capture the outcome of the current value set in that the current value for the variable that we have set in the process group. Next, what we do, we get the next available DB switch. What does that mean? Do a diff between two arrays in bash, and then we capture the difference. In this case, um, if I would give an example, if our current value is DB01, then he will add the DB02. If our current value is DB02, then he will replace it with db01. Then we update the process group variable with the new variable. After that, we capture the current variable and then we expose it to the payload. Let's go now and run this in the terminal just to observe what's happening. Let's export all the variables. Now let's capture the current value that we have set in our variable. So what we're trying to do here, basically, we're going to interact with the NiFi toolkit and capture the value that this variable carries. If we're going to see what's the value that was captured, run an echo and current DB, we see is the exact value that we have on our canvas, DB01. Right, on the canvas, before we start, make sure you follow the link in the description to get access to this template. Um, so let's go over it. First thing you want to do, you want to set the processor group property to a single flow file per node. And why is that? We want only one flow file to be worked on. So how do we do this? You click right on the processor, configure, and you go to processor group flow file concurrency. And you choose from the concurrencies, single flow file per node. If you hover over the question mark, it explains exactly what happens. Only a single flow file is to be allowed it to enter the process group at a time on each node in the cluster. So if I'll give um, this processor two entries here, for example, let's give it another one, three entries. And uh, you see at this point, we only have one available in the queue that it's inside the flow and three are waiting outside. If I were to jump inside and clear this one, assuming that the processor group assumes that it's processed, a new will take its place from outside. So we see we have one up, we have two left outside. So basically until this one processes with success, none of the others will be available to come in. Let's go ahead and review what we're doing. First, on the canvas of the processing group, we have a variable, a variable called DB name. This variable called DB name, it's the initial database that we are gonna use into our connection. We have an execute SQL. The execute SQL uses this query. I have in both database for our example, the same object, so they will be able to query. One database is a MySQL database and the other one it's a Postgres database. And here we have a connection pool lookup. The connection pool lookup links to these two connection pools, DB01 and DB02. If we look at its configuration, we see here that we have two properties. By default, when you create a DBC pool, it will come empty, it's a bit strange. So let's say DBC pool, um, connection pool, and you go to it and if you go configure it, it's pretty much empty. But if you click on the add button and say new db then he will forward it to a drop down menu and here you choose from the connection so if you say db01 
and say okay you hover over the question mark here and it gives you an explanation of what happens uh, this will return this connection pool when the database name property is set to an edb so basically this value that's why we chose to name our databases db01 and db02 as per per this configuration whenever this database name property value comes with this value it will be forwarded to this connection next what we have here we have a slack integration that uh, every time a successful entry happens he will send a notification of slack this is just for the demo so we can see how data flows following that if a failure happens we route it to a route on attribute and we evaluate the incoming failure if it's a sql failure then he will evaluate it and he will send it to this route if it's a connection error in this case a connection error from my sql he will be routed to this connection and if it's a postgres error connection he'll write it to this connection and we have two outputs for the connection errors that will go into the retry flow file and one that will go to a sql error and again we're linking it to a put slack notification what we're gonna do right now is run a successful uh, run what i'll do i'll just let one flow file in and we can see that query run success on db02 I'll go to switch manually to DB02 now, save it, and we'll let another flow file through. Let's run once. We can see that he connected to DB02 right now and he ran with success. Let's go ahead, switch it back to DB01. Let's go ahead and stop the MySQL service. I'm on my local. We kind of, let's say, create a scenario where the database goes offline for whatever reason. So the database is now offline. And if we were to let one of these in, Oh, we can see we get an error and we get a failure route. What happened here? The flow file is currently penalized in the data you cannot process at this time. The outcome of a failure in execute SQL comes with a penalty. And when this penalty runs out, if you look at the queue, you see here was penalized for 23 seconds. And this particular flow will be routed to this route on attribute looking and he will evaluate this attribute execute error message and he will look for communication exception if we see he already went and he got evaluated took this route and he went to retry profile and if we see here right now he's doing the switch the retry flow file will evaluate it once if the failure happens more than one he will then send on the retries exceeded connection the retries exceeded connection is linked to our execute string command. The execute string command will run that bash shell script that we saw at the beginning. If you see here the way we do it, we just point the command path to our variable and the output is going to be stored in the new instantiated db value. So if you see here right now, we have this original flow, the outcome of this command was to change the variable. Now we see we have a variable db2. And if we open our Slack message here, so let's say new line so we can see the difference. This will result in a successful run now. And we can see query run with success on DB02. So this demonstrates how the database can switch from one side to another using this approach. So just to recap what we've done, we've created a processing group and we set the single flow file per node property this it means that only one flow file can reach inside and be processed following that we set up some attributes so this attribute we instantiate a database.name using the variable that we have on the canvas and then we forward it to a connection pool lookup the connection pool lookup depends on the incoming property to decide on what database to connect if the database query is successful we will route it to a put slack if it's failed the failure will be evaluated if it's a SQL failure, again, it will be sent to a notification channel and then we store the SQL error here. If it's a connection failure, then we send it to a retry and we retry it once. If the, fa if the connection fails again, then the retry profile will send that flow to the retries exceeded. The retries exceeded connection will be linked to an execute stream command. The execute stream command will run the shell script that we went over at the beginning of our tutorial. The shell script pretty much takes a list of databases available and evaluate it against the current database. And he will update that value with the leftover database name. After that happens, we use that fail flow and we route it to an update attribute where the update attribute will update the database name 
value to the database that it's up and running and then the execution work with success so this is a scenario where you have a let's say a routing strategy for database failure or outages i hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and make sure you click on that uh, like button and consider subscribing i see you in the next tutorial